just in, we were live at main event. We were indeed. Recorded prior to SmackDown, as I understand. The yes. news is just coming into me here. Yes. Uh, and it seems as if we're going to tell you the results of main event. Uh, as this is the introduction to the midweek wrap-up. Yes. That's, that's correct. My sources are yes. telling me this is the intro to the midweek wrap-up. Yes. Uh, welcome to the midweek wrap-up. We want to start off things by talking about Heath Slater versus Zack Ryder. Uh, Heath Slater yeah. being flanked by both Adam Rose and Curtis Axel. Uh, helpful to him on multiple occasions. Uh, Again, Bo Ryder. Yeah, back Bo in Ryder, the studio. Yes, uh, you know, you know, laying down the fi finishing touches to, to tear up the rap the rap charts. Uh, so be looking forward to news uh, regarding the release of that album. Uh, but we had not one but two victory laps for the Social Outcast yeah. in this match. Uh, every time Heath Slater got a chance to knock Zack Ryder down, he took advantage, and we got a victory lap uh, in uh, in spirit of Bo Ryder not being there. Um, a fantastic match between these two. Lots of great spots. Uh, Zack Ryder trying to go for the broski boot like he did a couple weeks ago uh, on Adam Rose, I believe. Uh, Slater getting pulled out of the way. Ooh, Ryder right, um, gives himself a little cratchy crotch. Slater goes, uh, tries, tries to pick up the win. Ryder gets the, uh, the advantage back. Hits the broski boot. Actually ends up diving onto Rose and Axel on the outside. But as he's getting back in the ring, Heath Slater is able to kick him through the ropes, pick him in, and hit a big impaler DDT, and Heath Slater picks up the win over Zack Ryder. Heath Slater, baby. Heathy baby. The Crimson Werewolf, along with the Axeman and the, the Red Radical Dragon. Mongoose. Wasn't he also the Red Dragon? He was the Red Dragon. He was the Red Dragon. Yes. Uh, Which is after I recently just rewatched the movie Red Dragon. That's not, a, like, in my head now, it's no longer a super positive nickname. No, no, it is not. Uh, it's more of a family murdering schizophrenic nickname. Still makes sense to me. All right, moving into some Divas action, we had Natalia taking on the foxy one, Alicia Fox. Uh, this one felt a little clumsy at points. Um, I, to me, the real only mishap I saw is Natalia going for her front drop kick completely missed. Yeah, it was, she was about this far away from her face. Like, with that part. You can't see if I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, and that's great you for you people listening to the podcast. You should have just kept it <laughs> in front. Just like this far. Just, I hope just, you guys have a really good like, 2D depth perception. <laughs> no, no way she was going to hit it from that point. Uh, no, I mean, it's this is a match we've seen a lot uh, it's good to see Natty getting back into the I was fray excited of to see Natalia. Um, and Alicia Fox and always she's looking good. Y yeah, has Natty ever not looked good? Some would argue. Some would be stupid. Fuck you guys. Uh, they must be hanging out with Alex Riley and Titus O'Neil and Seamus and the Miz. Yeah. Fuck you guys. And but also Mojo Raleigh. Oh, I forgot about that guy. It's a party. Uh, Mojo Raleigh's there. But. Uh, but yeah, no, Alicia Fox always hitting that Northern Lights suplex with the bridge. Absolutely. Uh, flawless every single time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, let's see, we had a, a, and a, we had a couple attempts, uh, from Foxy to pick up the win, um, but I, I don't know, I don't know what her, I don't know what her deal was. She, so she sets up Natalia for her, um. Her roll up, she like does a split leg up on the top rope and goes for the roll up that way. But Natty was able to stop it, reverse it, and then put in the sharpshooter and make Foxy tap out. Uh, yeah. So I mean, if you count this with the SmackDown, I was appreciative, and so was the guy sitting next to me uh, at SmackDown. Not you. I mean, you're probably appreciative also. The fact that both Divas matches were ended in submission holds. They were indeed. The sharpshooter and a crossface. Yeah. Uh, ca Canadian finishers. Yeah. Going. Canadian finishers. Finishers. Now, a we go into a spectacle of a tag team match. Yeah, talk about uh, dream teams, some the fantasy warfare that was beyond even what we have booked in the past. You know, th th this, is, this is 
we couldn't even fathom a match like this, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, we, we've done a lot of crazy fantasy warfare matches back in the early days. Oh, yeah. You know, with infernal matches and, you know, giant tag team matches and all sorts of triple threat matches. And uh, nothing ever came close to this match. Yes. Uh, nothing could compare to the team of Darren Young and Mark Henry. Except for, perhaps, the team of Fandango and Damian Sandow? Now, don't get us wrong. Uh, before we get into the actual uh, logistics of the match itself, okay. I something that never occurred to me until I'm watching him live... And his entrance, uh, Sandow's slogan, his little, uh, logo, is, if you read it out loud, for being the intellectual savior, it's very improper grammar. Mm -hmm. No, I greater than you, or I is greater than you. Yes. Uh, it's not good grammar. Um, the, you know, the only thing I would change is don't just put the letter U. Just, like, I don't know, put, like, the word you, uh, don't... <sighs> still, it's still improper grammar, either way you look at it. Because you'd have to say, I am greater than you. But it's I greater than you. Yeah, it should be... That's not good grammar. It should be, like, Sandow is greater than you. Or... Or I'm... If you yeah. put an apostrophe N there, it works. I'm greater than you. Or if you put A-M, I am greater than you, but not I greater than you, then you don't sound like an intellectual savior. You sound like a fifth grade bully. That's why he became a stunt double. Ah, um, yes. The intellectual savior of The Miz. I think maybe it's a bit of a ruse. No. Are you telling me maybe that Damien a... Sandow isn't as smart as he claims to be on professional wrestling television? I'm, I'm thinking, and you know, I know it's extremely rare, but I'm thinking the character might not live up to what he actually says he is. What kind of world do you think we live in? Uh, Earth? That's right. I guess. You're smarter than Damien Sandow, technically. <laughs> I am greater than Damien Sandow. <laughs> Anyway, this was a weird ass tag team match. Made. Right off the bat, during the entrance, you already had the crowd split between Fandango and Damian Sandow. Well, and Fandango was definitely playing heel because Fandango comes out first and kind of takes a couple steps down the ramp. Sandow comes out and starts, you know, doing his his outstretched arms, which people are going crazy for, because we don't see Damien Sandow all that often. The, the fact that he is so over. Yeah, he's ridiculously over. And then Fandango... We him on television more often. Fandango tries to take the spotlight very much in the way The Miz did when Sandow was with The Miz, where he'd step in front of Fandango, or he'd step in front of Sandow, and then he'd get booed, and then Sandow would do the thing... And he get cheered, and they did that the whole way, and we even got Mark Henry in on it, where everyone kind of went nuts for Mark Henry. Um, Mark but, Henry's getting into hip swiveling some more. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah carrying on those uh, those new day dance moves that he was showing off on. Uh, you know, I think it's sexual, baby. It, it is sexual. He had a song. Mm -hmm. he, he had a sign at the end of the. <laughs> that was the. <laughs> oh, I popped for the sign. Um, yeah. So like this very much. Uh, like uh, the Y2J AJ tag team match, it was who like they, it was Sandow and Fandango were trying to upstage each other, while Darren Young and Mark Henry were actually kind of working together, despite Darren Young being unable to uh, whip uh, Mark Henry into Fandango, throwing out his back. Um, yeah, uh, weird. Um, Henry won. Henry and Young, yeah, the world's strongest no days off. Yeah, Darren Young I ended up uh, <laughs> go ahead, and, go ahead and work on a work on a tag team name. Okay. Um, Dar Darren Young actually uh, shoving Fondango into a uh, uh, Damian Sandow who had his back turned. Sandow goes crashing to the floor. 
Uh, Fandango does get the advantage back a little bit. Uh, Darren Young ends up making the tag to Mark Henry, and Fandango does the one thing that you don't do against Mark Henry, and he went for a crossbody. He went for a crossbody, and he got caught and hit with the World's Strongest Slam, and the team of Darren Young and Mark Henry, better known as World's Strongest D, <laughs> pick up the win over Damian Sandow and Fandango. Oh my god, that was perfect. And then there was indeed a sign where there was a Mark Henry chocolate bar with its sexual written next to it. And yeah. Mark Henry held that up for the end of main event. Yeah, I, I, it looked like somebody tried to make a uh, sign of like a Mark Henry Lego guy. Yes. It was just a perfectly square Mark Henry. And then I looked at it and I went, you know what? That's actually a fairly accurate representation of Mark Henry <laughs> because he's very square. He is very square. Um, it's kind of scary how he's, he's, kinda near, square. he's nearly as wide as he is tall. It's very square -y. Yeah. I was squared. <laughs> <laughs> so squared. Uh, but that is it for this update on main event. Let's send it over to Kevin Hawk and Travis Colt yes. for an update on NXT. And I do believe we have updates on Lucha Underground. Yeah, back, back to you guys on the black couch in front of the posters. Thank you very much, oh. Kevin and oh, Travis. We're live. We're live. Okay. We're live. Thank you Thank for that main event uh, recap. Uh, live from main event. I wish we could have seen main event. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the main event recap. We are here to tell you about NXT. Yes, yes we are. Um, so we opened up with uh, Baron Corbin. You know, he's he's a little angry because he doesn't get to be involved in the continuation of the Who is Number One Contender. He shouldn't be surprised, though. He did tap out to two submissions at one time. Uh, but he would end up facing... He was the only one that didn't win the match. <laughs> exactly. He would end up facing Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and this NXT is from the CFE Arena in Orlando, a much bigger arena than, uh, than Full Sail. A lot more NXT fans in attendance. Uh, lots of Johnny Wrestling chants. Uh, and Johnny Gargano had a hell of a test ahead of him because yeah. he is significantly smaller than Baron Corbin. Um, and I gotta say, Corbin was fairly dominant for a good majority of this match. Oh, yeah. Uh, but towards the end, uh, Gargano had Corbin on the ropes to the point where... Corbin was actually bailing out of the ring and trying to, like, yeah. create distance. Yeah, Johnny hit him with the cheetah swipe. He hit him with the, the slingshot spear uh, and almost picked up a win. Well, no, actually, he didn't even get close to picking him with the spear. That was a lie because Baron Corbin just shoved him off after one. Uh, but, yeah, there, there, was a couple, there was a couple times, it was like, after Corbin hit the deep six, we're like, okay, it's over from here. But then Johnny kept coming back. Yeah. And Corbin actually had to uh, make Johnny chase him out of the ring, mm -hmm. back into the ring, and allow him to hit the end of days where Baron Corbin would pick up the win. Uh, so yeah, he had to play. He had to play some heel tactics there in order to uh, to get the win there. Uh, we had Sami Zayn talking about uh, Regal's decision, saying he can't blame Regal for the decision, but he's not gonna let Samoa Joe stop him from being the first ever two-time NXT champion. Yeah, you know, I think that's the cool thing about NXT is they've still yet to have a two-time champion. Yeah, no, no repeats. Which, I mean, we've been. I mean, NXT's been a big thing for almost two years. Go on. I mean, that's I, yeah. We're actually just hit the two-year mark of. The, we've uh, had multiple, multiple, multiple two-time champions on the main roster of all sorts of things, especially in the, the last two years. In the last two years, so. Yeah, no. Roman Reigns became a two-time world champion. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kaliso became a two-time United States champion. Yeah. Uh, we've had multiple... Uh, the New Day became two-time tag team champions. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot, yeah, lots of title changes on the main roster, but not so much as far as the NXT roster. Is yeah, concerned. well, I mean, still a lot of title changes, but not... But no, yeah, no, 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 no repeats. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't. Even, I don't even think the. I think the the women's championship might be the only one that has a two time champion. Maybe, maybe not. I don't recall. I don't think so. I don't know. Paige to Charlotte to Sasha to Becky. I mean to Bailey. Is that it? I think so. Wow. Impressive. 
Uh, moving See, I don't on. think there's been a two-time any champions in NXT. Yeah, tag teams? Uh, Ascension to Lucha Dragons to... If we're talking yeah. since it's been on TV, uh, I Neville or Corey Graves, I think, one of them is a two-time tag team champion. But no full team. I, I don't think so. We'll have to I do the know. research. We'll talk yeah. to you later about that. Speaking of the tag team... I'm going to research while we're talking about Do it. During, uh, speaking of the tag team division, we had the Hype Bros taking on the jobber squad of Corey Hollis and John Schuyler. Uh, very, uh, it, was, it was decent. It was just, you know, John Schuyler and Corey Hollis are the, you know, they, they, they are extreme jobbers. They like to get the shit kicked out of them. They've... You know, they've been beat up by the mechanics, they've been beat up by Enzo and Cass, and now they got beat up by the Hype Bros. Uh, yeah. a, good, a good run towards the end where, you know, Mojo was hitting some big moves, set up uh, Skyler for the Broski boot, which, which he stuck yeah. that boot to the side of Skyler's head. Uh, and then Corey Hollis ended up getting the assisted Rough Rider for the win, going Yay, to for not calling it what it's called. You're welcome. Uh, we had Rich interviewing Bay Mella, talking about the main event of today's uh, episode of NXT was the women's championship match. Uh, both of them very excited for the match, but both of them very focused on either becoming or remaining the NXT women's champion. And speaking of the women's division, we had Alexa Bliss take on Cameron. Uh, Cameron looking better than she has since her debut as a Funkadactyl. Um, still not super crisp in the ring. She goes to a lot of the same, a lot of the same moves when she's in there. But a lot better. I'm gonna say a lot improved. Yes. Since uh, coming off of the main roster. Yeah, her her ring awareness is is getting better. She's not trying to pin people while they're on their stomach, which is great. Um, you know, a, a lot of vast uh, improvements for Cameron, but it wasn't yeah. enough to stop Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss was extremely aggressive in this match. This was heel versus heel, which was the most interesting thing about this particular matchup. Yeah. Rather than having the usual face face versus heel. God, this match was uh, beautiful. But it was bootyful indeed. But Alexa Bliss picking up the win, hitting the Bliss Flip and the Sparkle Splash for the win, showing... Her, uh, her, her boys, how it's done because they just can't seem to win a match. So to make sure to clarify what we were just talking about, Neville is the only two-time tag team champion in NXT. All right, so he won. He's, he was part of the inaugural tag team championships as part of British Ambition. And that was him, him and Oliver Gray. Oh, okay. And, and then him and Corey Graves. Him and Corey Graves won it back after him and Oliver Gray lost to the Wyatt family. Okay, they won it back from the Wyatts. Okay. Yep, and so Neville and Graves lost to the Ascension, then Lucha Dragons, then Murphy, Ludwig, and Mechanics. All right. Sounds good. Speaking of the tag team titles again, we had Enzo and Cass giving another reminder to the Mechanics about who they're messing with and that they plan on getting another shot at those tag team titles. Uh, they were joined by American Alpha, because next week we will get those four guys taking on the Mechanics and Blake and Murphy in eight-man tag team action. Uh, yes. Uh, a funny little backstage situation with uh, uh, G Jordan and Gable uh, were commenting on the fact that Enzo and Cass said they're going to be back-to-back -back tag team of the year. Uh uh, Gable saying, no, that's not going to happen because this is 2016. It's an Olympic year. Insinuating the fact that since he was in the Olympics, he and Jordan are going to be Tag Team of the Year. Uh, and then he said, but next week, uh, we're going to beat the other four guys because we're going to be ready, willing, and Cass, Cass Smack, Smack Talker, Talker Skywalker, Skywalker, Jordan said something else, and Gable. Yeah. Funny situation. It was extremely entertaining. Uh, we had another match with the drifter Elias Sampson taking on uh, that jobber from TNA, Jesse Sorensen. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about it during the match. We're still not totally sold on Sampson as far as the drifter gimmick is concerned. But he does make improvements every week. Yeah, I think every time I see him come out, I like him just a little bit better. Yeah. 
Uh, this match specifically, I really enjoyed how he put a lot of good crisp touches on his moves. And he's very making everything. Very, he had a lot of snaps to every move. Yeah, a lot did. of uh, good emphasis on just really basic maneuvers like a jumping knee lift yeah. and a neck breaker. You know, to make them look that much more. You know, anybody can do a jumping knee lift. Anybody can do a swinging neck breaker. Exactly. But you you pull it off in that way that makes it look like it's more than it really is. Right. And you also made mention of the fact that when he had... Uh, had his elbow drop. When, when he, yeah, the elbow drop was fantastic. When he had Sorensen down in the rest hold, rather than like a headlock or a cravat or something, he had his face pressed against his knee. Yeah, he was, which was cranking his head into his knee. Which was inter interesting was, offense. Yeah, uh, gnarly. But he did end up uh, using the knee lift to daze Sorensen to where he could do the short arm swinging neck breaker and pick up yet another win. Uh, so yeah, hopefully... I want to use the top rope elbow drop again. Yeah, I thought I thought that was that, cool. You know, not not a lot of people do top rope elbow drops as a finish anymore. That, I mean, you know, Test used to do it. Uh, you know, it was always Macho Man's thing. You know, bring the elbow drop back. Let's do that. All right, moving on. We had Apollo Cruz talking about his match last week with Finn Balor, realizing that he has now figured out what it takes to become champion. He knows what he needs to do. Yeah. And he can expect that the next time we see him in the ring, it will be a different Apollo Crews. Well, that's scary, because I like Apollo Crews the way he is. Some people don't. Tony! Wouldn't it be such a weird swerve gimmick if Chuck Taylor comes out next week as Apollo Crews? <laughs> well, it, ma it makes sense. Chuck Taylor's black, right? Well, a, a Scoot Tatum, I mean. What if Scoot Tatum came out oh. as Apollo Crews? Don't you think he doesn't look anything like Chuck Taylor? I, I got him confused. I don't know. I'd like to see Scoot Tatum in the uh, in NXT. Yeah, big dust. Should uh, should like we should team Scoot Tatum and Johnny Gargano up as like team punch. Yeah. You know they should they should have hand team hand. There we go. Yeah, they could they could have. I don't you know like I think it could work. I, th I think I think we're I think we're onto something here. Yeah. Should, we should get some gauntlets made up for him or something. Yeah. Send in the idea. Some sort of a logo with yeah revolving around a hand maybe. They you know and one of these. you know and I I feel like they're both really nice guys. They could become friends. They could wear similar tights. You know, yeah. it can, it can totally work out. All right, and in our main event, we had Bailey defending the NXT Women's Championship against Carmella. This being Carmella's big test. Was she going to yes. be able to hang in the women's division considering the women that preceded her in the Four Horsewomen? And she did a great job. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it goes to show... Uh... And sort of the way that we talk about like matches with John Cena mm -hmm. is that having a really good opponent can either be extremely detrimental or be extremely helpful and make you up your game to match your opponent. Because either, you know, some people just don't have that right. and it makes them look bad or some people have that ability to up themselves and get on the level of their opponents, depending on who they are. Yeah. And give them a moment to shine. Mm -hmm. And this is what did Car you know, what it did for Carmella was it gave her that moment and she really brought it compared to anything else I've ever seen her do. And it also helps, you know, we talked about we talk about it every time we talk about Bailey. The fact that she is that fourth woman in the four horsewomen, she has she is leading this next generation, so mm -hmm. she is the ultimate ring general as far as the women's division is concerned. I mean, if you it's watched, her job to make the other girls. Yeah, if, even if you watched Breaking Ground, you know. Yeah, uh, she she got to put together the match between Carmella and uh, yeah, uh, Eve, Eve Marie. Marie. Yeah, like yeah, Coach Bloom was having Bailey put matches together. Yeah, uh, in the women's division at NXT. So I mean. And that's the big thing about there, too, is 
I, I don't want to say anything negative about the women in NXT, but there's not a single entity in NXT, female-wise, that can hold a candle to Bailey as far as Agreed. Uh, popularity and in-ring uh, it factor, I guess. I think the, close, the closest one we have right now is probably Emma. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, it's a good thing that Bailey wasn't able to get called up at the time with the rest of the Divas. Yeah. Because I feel like if Bailey had got called up at the same time, so I think she was dealing with her wrist injury yeah. at the time, uh, and that yeah, kept that, her from getting called up. Yeah, because she, yeah, she, wasn't, she wasn't actually wrestling at the time, which is what held her back. Uh, I think if she had gotten called up, the Divas division on NXT would be floundering right now. Yeah, there. Yeah, there wouldn't because be. There wouldn't be that that strong cornerstone that holds it together. Because yeah, I mean, you had a couple other girls, but when you had Charlotte and Bailey and Becky and Sasha, you had four. You know, that's like having your John Cena and Randy Orton and you know whoever else. Yeah. Uh, and basically. It's kind of like what the way the main roster is right now. The fact that Seth Rollins and Cena and Orton are injured. Yeah. You know, it's all everybody's relying on other people. Well, now it's Bailey who's kind of been the, you know, the sh- overshadowed one out of the four of them is the big everyone look at her now because she's the one that knows what she's doing and she's the one that has to lift everyone else up. So when she eventually does get called up, we're not left with a stale, floppy divas roster. Right. Uh, floppy and, is a and, weird and word the, to describe and this, as. <laughs> and this match was great for Carmella. She did great in the technical aspect at the yeah. beginning of the match. Um, you know, she started. She started to break. She did two. Su- she did two suicide dives through the. Top and middle rope, and then she did a low pace suicida through the bottom and middle rope. Uh, a fantastic moment for her. That's the first time we've ever seen her do something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and this is the thing too is, you know, I am a firm believer in that the best way for a wrestler to get better is by wrestling someone who's better than them. Right. Uh, and I'm hoping that everything Carmella did in this match, she takes with her to her next match Mm -hmm. and applies all of those things to the next match. Right. Because if she just goes back to doing the exact same stuff she was doing because it's not a match with Bailey and she doesn't have Bailey to work with, it's gonna it's reverting back to ground zero. Yeah. And and the women's division can't grow that way if you just go back to doing your normal shtick. Yeah. Uh, yeah there 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 needs to be a passing of the talent throughout, you know, there there needs to be more experience in different types of wrestling other than this is what I do every time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just great stuff. Carmella did a fantastic job. Uh, and then it was, the, I, the most interesting thing about this match is that we never had uh, either of them really go for, well, I, okay, so we had Carmella try to go for her finishing move. Yeah. And- where she hit the complete shot and then tried to go for her her leg submission, uh, but Bailey was able to roll into a a pinning combination, and then this is what actually set off the end of the match. Is we had pin reversal after pin reversal after pin reversal. We had we had a crucifix into a crucifix, and then they both got up, and then Carmella went for a sunset flip, and she got the sunset flip, but Bailey was able to reverse it back and get a seated jackknife, which gave Bailey the win. She retained the women's championship. Uh, we had a respectful end to yeah, I those think two. It, it's a good finish in a way that says, "Oh, hey, look, uh, there's a good chance we could get a Bailey versus Carmella part two, because you can't say that it was a definitive Bailey hands down, flat out won the match." Yeah, it was just she. She, was, she caught Carmella. Yeah, it was. You know, she was the better person at that time Mm -hmm. because she was able to think on her feet just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
But yeah, it wasn't like she hit her with the hug plex and had the definitive one, two, three, you know, Carmella was down and out. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a way to help Carmella look even better. Right. Is by the fact that she never ended up, she didn't get hit with a finishing move. Nope. Uh, and we did have a continuation in uh, the women's division as Carmella was leaving. Uh, she was heading back up the walkway. She got attacked by Eve Marie and Nia Jax. Uh, Bailey went out to make the save, but she ended up getting taken out. Uh, yeah, Carmella Nia Jax had butted her. Yeah, and uh, Carmella got dragged back to the ring where she was held by Nia Jax and kicked repeatedly by Eve Marie. Yeah, Nia Jax also. Well, I get like two, four. two, two gnarly head leg drops. Yeah. Um, and so Bailey is able to get back up. She tries to fight off Eve Marie. And Nia Jax again, but she's unable to. And then Asuka comes out and stares down Eva Marie and Nia Jax. Well, yeah. Eva Marie hid behind Nia Jax. And they just... Okay. They, 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 they left Carmella where she was laying. They didn't even touch Bailey. They just walked away. And we were like, alright, cool. Asuka's helping out the baby faces. And then she turned around and she gave Bailey that smile. And then she brushed off the title like... Guess what I'm coming for? Yeah, let's get the dirt off of it because yeah. I want a shiny belt. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if we do get Bailey versus Carmella too, that's awesome. But I'm pretty sure we're looking at Bailey versus Asuka for that women's championship. Yeah, that I think would be an awesome match. Maybe mm -hmm. a takeover. Pro yeah, pro yeah, probably probably take over Dallas. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how much time we have between then. About um, two months. Let's see. We're about the middle of November. We're we're the middle of February. Were you about to say November? Nope, totally not. Uh, beginning of April. So yeah, we're we're about six weeks. No, you know what? While we're watching, it said WrestleMania is fifty three days away. So yeah, we are just under two months. Yeah. So I'm thinking there was probably a good chance between now and then we'll get a number one contenders match between Oscar and Nia Jax. Mm, okay. Uh, that's sense. my theory. They had their little stare down bit. Right. The only thing I have a problem with there is it's again we're gonna have Nia Jax, who's supposed to come in and be this dominant. She's gonna lose. Thing. She's gonna lose again. Yeah. You know, and no, there's nothing wrong with losing a match. But there, there's a problem with losing a match where you're trying to establish yourself. Yeah, it's she's not winning any matches that mean anything yet. Yeah. She's only beating. People who aren't even fully fledged signed talents to NXT. Yeah, L Liv Morgan, Deanna Perrazzo, uh, Evie, Evie, yeah, and these are people who Shazam. Er, did she go against Shazam McKenzie? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, they, yeah, she she's beaten a handful of girls that we don't see regularly on TV. Yeah, which don't mean anything to the NXT audience. Yeah, so it's just kind of. Neither here nor there. Yeah. That she's winning these matches. It's just to make her look big and scary. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think what she needs is she needs to come on and get a pinfall victory over someone who's, you know, even if she goes against someone who's a heel, like an Emma or a Dana Brooke, mm -hmm. have her come in and beat one of those guys up. And, you know, and not only will that say, hey, look, I just beat somebody who's established, somebody who's a name to. NXT, but also, hey, even though I'm a heel, I'm not going to have, you know, the, my alliance is only with Eva Marie, we don't, you know, we still think we're better than all the other people. Right. You know, so she needs something to benefit her, I think, before or immediately after losing to Asuka. Right. Um, and then to finish off the show, we had words from Samoa Joe. Uh, saying that, you know, he's he tried to help Sami Zayn, he tried to save his career, but now, next week, we will be getting that number one contenders match, and Sami Zayn will look across the ring, and he will see the inevitable, which is Samoa Joe as the next NXT champion. Mm. So, strong words from the 
Oh, uh, Samoan Submission Machine. Uh, I'm looking forward to that match. That should be an extremely fantastic match. I, I think Zayn said it was the first time that they're going to actually be in a one-on-one -on -one match against each other. Like, ever? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure during his promo he said this is going to be the first time they've been across the ring from each other in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Well, fun. Yeah. So, something that no one has ever seen. It should be fun to watch. But that is it for our update from NXT. Uh, our, 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 can, can you hear anything from Travis and Kevin? Because I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have a Lucha Underground update. Yeah, I'm... I, I'm I'm being told right now by the studio that we are going to send it back over to Kevin Hawk and Travis Colt Do you hear a for song? a a a Lucha Underground results That's, recap. I I hear singing. That, that, that was, it's like a chank. Those guys. It's it's weird. Those guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kevin, Travis, if you can hear me, take it away. Guys? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Travis, Kevin, yeah, we, we, we hear you. We, hear, we are here for the Lucha Underground update, yes. Uh, we're not, we're, um, yeah, so uh, Lucha Underground, uh, <clears throat> episode three of, uh, of season two. It was good. Uh, yeah. Stuff happened. Uh, yes, it did. It's, stuff always happens on Lucha Underground. It's Lucha Underground. I mean, we did. Uh, we had Cobra Moon debut. Yeah. Uh, not the not the uh, most fluid of uh, debuts. No. Some uh, some hesitation. Some some pulled shots as she probably could have uh, laid in on her opponent Bengala. Wow. Uh, but she did pick up the win. Bengala. With a... Breaking news: Bengala to uh, join WWE roster and join up with. Curtis Axel and Adam Rose as part of the Social House Cats. Oh, wow. Uh, she did beat Bengala with the uh, Dragon Sleeper, which is being called the Snake, sl Snake Sleeper currently by uh, Matt Stryker. I'm sure that'll change. Um, Probably. But yeah, I, I hope her in-ring stuff gets a little better. Uh, hopefully that was just kind of a one-time nerves getting the better of her match. Um, we had a lot of backstage stuff in this one. Yeah. Uh... We had Phoenix. Which is, which is kind of good because I felt like episode two was really lacking in. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a lot of story build. Backstage. Yeah, it momentum. wasn't a lot of story build as far as uh, as far as what's happening in the temple. Uh, but we had Phoenix go to Katrina and demand a match against King Cuerno. Uh, Katrina really says, pushy. "Hey, Katrina's like, are you are you sure you want that? Because a thousand lives uh, do end eventually." And he says, "He says, yeah." But before that happens, I'll get rid of King Cuerno, Mil Mortes, and you. So yeah, he's uh, them's fighting words. Yeah, he's getting a little uh, maybe biting off more than he can chew. Maybe getting a little big for his britches. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually jump ahead uh, real maybe, quick because maybe getting ready to hatch his tamagotchi a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll jump ahead just a little bit. Katrina did uh, go to King Cuerno, uh, who was lifting weights. Uh, saying that you took the title, but you didn't finish off Phoenix. Yeah. And Cuerno's like, I did what you wanted me to do. I took the championship, and now I'm holding it. And she, and she's, more case of safe, yeah. basically. And she, she's like, I, I, I understand, I understand, and that's, and that's great because we're all on the same side. But tonight, I need you to finish Phoenix in a last luchador standing. Uh, so make sure that the, the bird never flies again. Uh, and I we, feel like this is going to kind of lead into something. Okay. And I mean, you'll be able like, it makes sense once we get to the main event. Uh, it makes a little bit more sense. But I feel like the idea is going to happen as eventually is that Cuerno is going to get tired of being Katrina's the, lap dog. the pawn yeah. of the Katrina and Muertes regime. Yeah. And it's eventually going to backfire. And it's one of those things, you know, be careful, be careful of abusing your allies because, you know, Corno could get tired of, you know, being used as the middleman to, you know, meet the ends of what Mortes and Katrina want. And he has the gift of the gods yeah. championship. Yeah, he has a championship match whenever he wants it. So he's the guy you want to stay on the good side of. Exactly. If you're 
Katrina. Uh, so, okay, so we found some interesting stuff about a couple characters in this. Yeah. We found out that Aerostar is a time traveler. And that a millennia ago, there was the prophecy that the seven tribes would be at war and the gods would return in the form of a man. Yeah. And he's talking to, uh, to a Native American t type character here around a campfire. And so he's actually sent to the temple to stop or try and bring the tribes back together because eventually these tribes are going to have to fight the return of the gods. Yeah. I'm wondering is the uh, is the the man that the gods come back as is that going to be Matanza or do you think it's going to be something else? It's hard telling. I mean it could be Matanza, it could be referring to uh, maybe Muertes and the disciples. True. That's true. Uh you know, it could be Phoenix, even. There's a lot of mythology-related characters going on right. in the Lucha Underground Temple. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mythology-based characters, up next we had the return of Drago. Hey. And he took on Jack Evans in a singles match. I was well, excited to see Drago back. Yeah, it, it, Drago was one of the, the standouts from season yeah. one. So, so, so being so integral, I was kind of surprised that it, it took all the way to episode three to bring him back into yeah. the... Uh, Fold. But a great match between him and Jack Evans. Uh, you know, both of them, a lot of twirly moves in this. Uh, Jack Evans really taking the time to show off as much as he could. Yeah. Uh, Jack Evans sold like a slap with a. <laughs> like, like a 720 spin. Yeah. He spun like seven times after Drago bitch slapped him. That was a fantastic sell. Uh, but Drago. Uh, eventually got Jack Evans down and tried to go for the Dragon's Lair pin, but Jack, Evan, Jack Evans was able to reverse that into a backslide and then actually bend himself over Drago, adding more pressure and pushing himself on the ropes, pinning Drago, and then proceeded to call himself Jack the Dragon Slayer Evans. This is not going to end well for Jack Evans. I, I smell a feud coming on. Yes, uh, and we do know that eventually, somewhere down the line, we do get a three-way nunchuck battle between these two and PJ Black in the backstage area. So I'm guessing next week or the week after, we'll get PJ Black involved in this. I think uh, I think PJ Black and Evans are going to be partners. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Purely on the basis that uh, Evans and Angelic and Helico are con are commonplace partners outside of Lucha Underground. Right. But the fact that they already have Angelico teaming with uh, Son Ivalice. of Havoc and Ivelisse, yeah. they want somebody else, and it's going to be kind of funny because it's also another high-flying South African yeah, guy. Yeah, from one South African to another. All right, it works. Uh, we also find out that next week Tejano will be returning to the temple, so we look forward to a match with Tejano. I oh, hope he beats up somebody I don't like. Mm. Be real. Uh, I don't think there's anybody I dislike in Lucha Underground. That's true. There's yeah. There's really not a bad person. Only person I really wasn't fond of first season was Big Rick. Yeah. And and you've never really been a fan of Jack Evans, but he's yeah. That's more a gimmick than actual abilities right. and style. Uh, I I like watching Jack Evans wrestle. Oh yeah. It's it's Jack Evans' uh, attitude. His personality is yeah. kind of douchey. Uh, we had uh, Puma in the back, uh, and he was being antagonized by Katrina. Mm -hmm. uh, she was bringing up he the was fact... He was a lot of staring into a mirror. Yeah, and praying, apparently. And um, baring his teeth. Yes. Well, that, that's, that's what Puma does. Puma talks through gritting his teeth and growling, because he doesn't actually talk. Uh, but Katrina was antagonizing him, talking about uh, last on season... Are now? What? I said, I wonder if I could be on Lucha Underground now. You're not Prince Puma. But I just growled through my teeth. But... Show up looking like Ricochet, and we'll talk. Um, <laughs> Katrina was antagonizing Puma, bringing up the fact that last season Conan was taken away uh, in a casket, uh, and saying that uh, uh, you know the last thing that Conan said while he was in the casket was "Forgive me." You know, was he uh, was he for, was he forgiving you, or was he uh, was he forgiving himself? You know, just really trying to. Uh, bring Puma down and let's him know that next week he'll be facing Pentagon Jr. 
and wonders, will uh, Puma be the one to make a sacrifice for his master as opposed to pending on, pending on doing it for uh, Vampiro? Yeah. So that should be a fun match. We, know, we, we saw those two face each other multiple times last season, so that should be fantastic. Uh, but then in our main event, we had the last luchador standing, Phoenix versus King Cuerno. This was fun. Holy crap. Uh, not only did we get, you know, we, we were reintroduced to the violence that Lucha Underground does, but just... The, and the table. Just the... That Lucha Underground does. Yeah, that, 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 uh... Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um... Just great work between Phoenix and Cuerno. Like, these two have such good chemistry. Two of the best luchadors on the roster, I'd yeah. say. Uh, top tier as far as their their athletic ability. Phoenix can just... He can twirl out of, like, any move that he wants to do. And it always looks fantastic. He, he did a twirl over the ropes. Yes. Uh, King Cuerno uh, did his... Uh, uh, arrow from hell through the corner instead of uh, just straight out into the aisle way. Yeah. Um, and then he... Um, wa- wa- I want to Fe- say also, early in the match, when Phoenix kicked Cuerno directly in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Toed him, like, right in the chin. Yeah. Like, ow. Cuerno, Cuerno knows whether or not Phoenix washed his socks that day. <laughs> I that, hope that's so. That's how close the... F- Foot was into the face. I hope so. Uh, King Cuerno, after the the arrow from hell, goes out and grabs a ladder and fucking knocks Phoenix right in the face right off the bat, and then sets it up against Katrina's office. And he like looks like he's about to climb, and then he goes, eh, "No, I got a better idea." He pulls out a table and sets the table up, and he's trying to German suplex Phoenix through it. Phoenix is able to reverse like backhand and kick him and like actually knock him down uh, and Phoenix starts climbing the ladder then Cuerno coming back to a sense it starts to chase Phoenix up the ladder Phoenix is now if there's something you don't do it should be like follow the bird guy up into the air yeah uh, Cuerno decides to start climbing the ladder Phoenix has now made his way to the top of the office we've seen plenty of dives from up there so I'm at the point like what the fuck are they going to do from this ridiculous spot? You know, this is usually Angelico's thing, but he's not in this match. Instead, Sometimes Arrow Star. Exactly. Uh, instead, Cuerno gets to the top of the ladder and makes the mistake of, oh, Phoenix, you know, he can use all of his limbs from where he's at. And Phoenix kicks the ladder over, sending Cuerno... Back first through the table with the ladder on top of him, and that is enough to keep King Cuerno down for a count of ten. And Phoenix, or Diaz, whichever language you speak, uh, it could be a kind of jute if you are Japanese. Um, yeah. But now it could be X. What if you're Roman? Yeah. If, <laughs> if you count the uh, looking at Roman numerals. <laughs> um. So now Phoenix uh, is on his way to getting a shot against King Cuerno for the for a uh, getting his gift of the gods championship back that he unfortunately lost in episode one. Uh, so yeah, so building up more of that particular storyline, but then we finished off with some more interesting backstory yeah. on one Cortez Castro. Maybe a little bit of a twist to yes. the character. Uh, apparently, Cortez Castro or otherwise known as Officer Reyes, was a undercover cop that was actually investigating Dario Cueto's uh, dealings within the temple. Yeah, and so all of season one, he was working Dario Cueto, yeah. really being an undercover cop. And he, and he like he just he found Bale and, and Mr. Sisko as just these thugs to kind of like cover up the fact that he was a police officer. Uh, Captain Vasquez, I believe was her name, uh, saying, well, you know, you you didn't exactly do your job right. And he's like, well, I wanted to bring Dario Cueto in once he had his brother kill Bale. And Captain Vasquez just doesn't give a shit about... Yeah, she's kind of a bitch. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and so... It's like, yeah, I got more important things to talk about than somebody dying yeah. of murder to the face. Literally. 
Um, face murder. Face murder. Um, and so Reyes thinks that he's being pulled out of this of this investigation. When but he's in, in too deep. When in, <laughs> when in fact, uh, Captain Vasquez is sending him in with uh, with some backup. That backup being one Joey Ryan. Uh, yeah. We don't have a name for him yet. I'm. I assume it's going it's to be Ryan. all like Officer Ryan or so. Because when well, when, I, when he comes into the wrestling, he's not. He's going to also still be undercover, so he's not going to come out as Officer Ryan. Yeah, no. I think he's going to be Joey Ryan. Yeah, because we we know that Cortez Castro, his real name is Ricky Reyes. So now we know that that Cortez Officer Castro Reyes. was just a just a cover name. Yeah. Um, unless, so, unless they send him in as Magnum. That'd be alright. Or Joey Magnum Ryan. Throwback to that 70s team. Just Joey Magnum? Joey Magnum would be a good name. Especially with his, his, current, uh, his current deal. Yeah. Um, you know, with... Uh, what was it? U-Porn? Yeah, specific adult entertainment websites. Yes. Um, so yeah, some interesting build in some story characters, some story yeah. lines. We know that we're going to be getting uh, Pentagon versus Puma. We know Tejano is going to be in action. Uh, we'll possibly get the first, uh, maybe the first in ring. Uh, maybe maybe we'll get Reyes versus Ryan. In, yeah, because they were sent in and told to right. uh, pretend that they hated each other. Yeah, for, yeah, pretend like you don't know each other. Better off. Pretend like you hate each other. Yeah, it's... Uh, and Reyes is like, well, that should be easy. Yeah, it's deception at the highest level. Of, yeah. You know, if you pretend you hate the guy you're working with, that's probably the easiest way to make people think that you're not working with that guy. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, we didn't get any more with Dario Cueto uh, as far as his... Uh, his, his temple. His new temple. Um... And we know, know we we know that Lotus is working with him, and we still have, we still haven't uh, seen the return of sexy star Marty the Moth and Marty's sister. Uh, uh, no, uh, in ring appearance of Rey Mysterio yet. No, he's still working with uh, uh, El Dragon as Tekka Junior. Um, and we know that eventually Johnny Mundo will be debuting Taya Valkyrie. Yeah. So lots of stuff still to come. In Lucha Underground. Thanks, thanks for getting busy. Thanks for watching the midweek wrap up. Yeah, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And click all the links down in the description because you get updates for videos, you get postings on Facebook, you get weekly pictures on Instagram. Uh, you can check out the podcast for those of you listening on the podcast. Check your description for a link to our YouTube page where you'll be able to see all the pictures we post. Uh, and you'll get exclusive videos like coming up this week we got a thomas's top five what? and for those of you on youtube you can find that over in that playlist over oh, there we got a snap. raw review got this mid big wrap up we have a special smackdown rundown live uh results we were at smackdown yeah, this past so week if you didn't watch smackdown when it came out before you watched that video sorry if we spoiled it for you but not sorry because it says spoiler in the title of the yeah, video, so it's, it's your own damn fault. Spoiler slash results, so if you watched it before not you watched sorry. SmackDown, it's your own damn fault. Exactly. Read, learn to read. Don't be stupid. And coming up later, uh, well, actually not this weekend, but on Monday, we will have some indie news with results yeah. from uh, PWG's Bowie. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't feed us after midnight from, from AI AD, Dubs AI Dubs and the an, the double header anniversary show from WSU and CZW also the final match will be taking place in the first round of the top prospect tournament on this week's Ring of Honor what? so thanks for watching and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next also also throw in another breaking news story in there cuz it just came in through me through my imaginary headset that we've been talking uh, to our correspondents uh, Kevin Hawk and Travis Colt. Oh. Uh, Titus O'Neil got suspended for being stupid. <laughs> fuck Titus O'Neil. Yeah, fuck that guy. Does it feel like Saturday to you? No. Mm. Also, fuck 